Hey guys. Hey. Year number two of our Tesla solar roof review. I wanted to answer some questions and I just why well, I just couldn't help but want to climb up onto this roof. So uh, hopefully the lighting's good this time. Hopefully you can see me. I'm not just blown out up here. Let's get a couple things out of the way before I climb on down. Firstly, this entire solar roof and uh, the three power walls inside the garage, they cost $32,000. Now, I know that that's crazy. They've raised the price since. They've kicked the can down to third-party installers. We'll talk about that later. I wanted to take this opportunity to climb up here, answer some questions. Let me climb off this thing, and then we'll get, we'll get into the meat and potatoes. I did it. I'm down safe. Here we are around back, as you can see, uh, with the sun to our face. We're surely creating a ton of electricity, but I want to go ahead and uh, talk about some of our usage numbers and the uh, annual costs of that usage and then the uh, unit cost for the last three years. So the year prior to the solar roof, we used 16,314 kilowatt hours, which cost $1,690 for a unit cost of 10.36 cent per kilowatt hour, which is about average for the uh, nation. Last year, our first year with the solar roof, we conserved some energy and only used 12,947 kilowatt hours for an annual cost of $47.49. Unit price, 0.36 cent per kilowatt hour. And remember, this isn't January through December. These are the uh, 12 or so months from when we installed until September. So without further ado, this year we used more energy, 15,967 kilowatt hours. But here's the catch. It cost us negative $360.34. For unit price, using the same formula of division, negative 2.25 cent per kilowatt hour, which is pretty crazy. We'll talk a little bit more about how that happened here in a minute, but I want to get out of this sun. Welcome to the garage. Here we have two inverters and we have three Powerwall 2s. They have since combined into a Powerwall 3 with more output, more power, sleeker install. I'm not sour about it because these have been fantastic. We have had 10,500 kilowatt hours of solar production this year and only 11,300 last year. So 800 less this year. It's been a fantastic rain year. I'm not sour about it because these Powerwalls have worked against all odds to save us $400 more than last year. So before we get into how that worked, I'm gonna address one of the most frequent questions uh, of the last video is about this machete. It was always here, it will stay here. I think it was for defending against rats in the garden. Rats like that. I use it for stress testing uh, our spare panels to prove the haters wrong. I have a video of me shooting these panels with uh, ice cubes and a slingshot to simulate hail. But again, they're warrantied and you can smack them as much as you want. Where we live, we have time of use and two periods. We have off peak and peak. Some places they have many tiers super off peak super on peak free nights etc people will often comment they'll say oh batteries they'll never make sense we'll never get a return on investment from solar let alone batteries depends on where you live dude if you have time of use the batteries are dope further i want to talk about how they went deeper last year we operated in time of use self-powered mode so when it became peak time 
we had stored solar in the batteries and we would use it to get through the peak and to save us that more expensive rate. This year, I re-looked at our agreement with the utility company and I realized because of the verbiage, we should be allowed to charge our batteries from the grid and export them to the grid. There's some confusion around the federal tax credit. The, the wording has changed. I'm, I'm not bothered by that. We charge from solar and then during that expensive peak time, rather than just run the house off of it, these guys absolutely dump electricity onto the grid. Our 14 kilowatt solar array rarely puts out more than 10 kilowatts. I mean, just by the angle of the sun, etc. But these guys, they dump their full power as soon as it hits peak time. And then they continue to dump until they hit my reserve. I think I set ours at about 20%. That's how we have saved so much more this year that uh, we haven't had a water bill because of a quirk of our utility. Our water bill from spring has been canceled out as have all of our fees and we've accrued a credit thanks to the power walls and that new grid export function. Now, if you live in places like Texas, California, Massachusetts, they have even more advantageous programs like I mentioned earlier, one of which Tesla has actually set up as a utility in places like Texas and some others so that through your app, they will negotiate rates for you through virtual power plant events, uh, sometimes $5 a kilowatt compared to the 24 cent that we might get per kilowatt. And in that case, I have seen Texans post their Texas electric bill where they have a negative $1,000 credit in a single month. So depending on where you live, the batteries are amazing financially. They also uh, have made it so we've We've not had any power outages. I'm not worried about power outages anyway, but it wouldn't even go noticed in this house. The other thing I want to talk about while I'm out here, I think that it is important. We've got a lot of comments from really smart people with dark sunglasses and red caps taking selfies, usually in the front of their big trucks, about how jokes on us because the carbon debt will never be paid off. We're not even doing anything good for the environment. So back when we started getting those comments, I went and looked into it. I used resources like Carbon Brief and uh, third-party reports of the carbon debt equivalents of batteries from various manufacturers over a, a large time span. The carbon intensity of batteries and solar panels is going down. It has a lot to do with the region where it was made, the company that made it, and the mix of electricity where it was produced. Uh, the newer the battery, the more American the battery, and specifically the Tesla nature of the batteries means they have the lowest carbon intensity of any batteries. In short, the roof and solar shingles, I think they're equivalent to how I would describe it is your great grandmother's fine china. Ceramics uh, embodied with bits of precious coloring and metals, right? Maybe the equivalent of some copper, uh, some gold foil. Their carbon debt was paid off in about three and a half months. These batteries, there's not that much cobalt in here. There's not that much lithium. They're both, both practically trace materials of batteries, honestly. The children's slaves in the Congo that we're hearing all about all the time, I sleep fine at night. That's not my problem. Five and a half months, the carbon debt was paid off. Every year, that gets easier as they produce solar panels and batteries with more renewables domestically. The Inflation Reduction Act has made it so that batteries are getting made all around now. Uh, if you live in the Southeast, you're now in the epicenter of American solar panel and battery production. Pat yourself on the back. Oh, I didn't say 10 foot by 10 foot pad of concrete driveway, four inches thick. That's the carbon equivalent in concrete. On this, I'm standing on probably a 10 foot pad of concrete. Equal carbon debt. No one's crying about that. On to the next one. Okay, we are back up on the roof again just so I can show you the general wear and tear after two years. Um, you can see there's some sticks 
and random debris that I think you would get from uh, any kind of roof, but the, this is certainly not immune, although it is, for the most part, self-cleaning. Nice heavy rain. Um, we'll get most of this gook and uh, pollen away. But another thing I want to show while we're up here, from this angle you can kind of see the panels. We've got a panel less shingle here and here and here and along the whole bottom. And then you have a longer run here, shorter run, longer run, shorter run, longer run, and so on. Overall, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I can look over and see this asphalt roof behind us and see that it also has leaves and things sitting on top. But um, even though we've had some hail, plenty of snowstorms, just looks a little bit dirty. Nothing big. Welcome back to the inside, where I want to wrap things up by talking about that price, $32,000. Uh, the price hike, return on investment, and uh, some other considerations. So firstly, we were part of that original Tesla solar roof price hike. We went along with the hike. I outlined this in my last video. We also got insurance towards a roof for hail damaged previous roof. Some people are unaware that that's a thing. It, it is a thing. I know. What, what can you say? Well, we were not part of a class action lawsuit. Tesla just lowered the price. They sent us a check for the difference unprompted for $8,000. Again, I explained it in the last video. It is kind of a crazy low price. I feel like we worked for it. I feel like I hounded them a lot. And I got kind of lucky that my uh, incessant like calling them and pestering them. Plus where we live, if you live in some place like or, or, or you name it, where you type in your address, which I, uh, please quote yourself a Tesla roof. You can do it on their website. I haven't since we did. So I don't know how much it would have gone up or if they would even let me, but we had solar city installers in our area prior to them being bought out by Tesla acquired. That's why we had people, the first party installers here. The complications were obvious. They had to rip off our old roof, something that I've heard rumors they either don't want to do, they want to apply their underlayment over your existing asphalt roof, or they'll charge you to do, or they'll have someone else do, it's a whole thing. Part of me suspects it's because in our case, they found damage and they replaced it. They mended the decking of our uh, roof structure. That cost a few thousand dollars, but it also wasted some of their time. Maybe they would rather not know. So they'd rather not peel off your old roof. Is that right? Probably not. I'm glad we got it when we did. You could have your roof fixed before ordering a solar roof, which is what I think they would recommend. I don't know the current state of first party Tesla solar roof installs. I got the impression from recent articles, etc., that they're really winding it down and they are kicking it to third party installers. Shout out to Matt Reisinger, who made a video on YouTube about the Tesla solar roof recently, where you can kind of see this. It's a luxury home builder. It, they're putting together quality, with no expense, spared kind of vibes, wealth gospel type vibes. I will say those kinds of houses which align with that culture are probably four times larger than this house and they probably have much more complicated roof structures than this house. People who report getting quoted, you know, $280,000 for a solar roof and 10 power walls or whatever, that wasn't what our situation was. We needed a roof and to unpack this a little further, on the front range of Colorado where we live, Homes price big time. Last year, our neighborhood's property assessments, the tax assessments, all went up over 50%. Houses here will get offered $75,000 over asking still, even though they haven't been updated in uh, since the 80s. I think it's a shame. And I wasn't aware until I became roof conscious. This just seemed like a cool product. Since I've gone to places where no one has asphalt roof, it's all nice slate shingles that will last, I don't know, a hundred years, not producing electricity. And I just don't think that $32,000 was a lot 
to pay for that. I, I just don't see it. So when the Warren Buffett's in the comments, that was a big thing in the last video, come, oh, actually return on investment, you'd be better off. Uh, the way I put this is it's something that you would buy with return on investments. Shouldn't, this isn't your retirement plan. It's just a nice, it's just a nice roof. If the premium over a normal roof takes a few years to pay back, and let's just say not even the premium over a normal roof, the total cost was $32,000, dude. It's less than the average new car in this country. Do you ever stop someone with a uh, Dodge Ram 1500 and say like, what do you think that'll be return on investment? Now, I don't, who cares? 32,000, it saves a couple thousand a year. It's been two years. So let's say 14, 14 years. If you subscribe, you'll find out. Maybe it'll be different. Maybe we'll get a VPP and we'll see the, uh, the yield of the power wall increase even more. That would be cool. But I've sometimes asked myself like, would we care if it stopped producing electricity? Yeah, it'd be a bummer. It'd still be a cool roof. People have brought up all sorts of things. And I just have to say like, hey, truth, confession here, confession. I never even looked at our power bills before we ordered the solar roof. I wasn't asked about the return on investment until after it was installed by some guy. And at the time, Tesla had not yet sent us back eight grand. So when he asked, I was like, I don't know, it costs 40 grand. I just do believe that houses should be built better and we should reward companies that are doing cool things. And that $32,000 was a really good deal. That it's such a good deal that like it couldn't last and it didn't last. So look around at roofs around you and it'll make sense. Third party installers, they're just gonna go, oh, materials times two, materials times three. People made out of money will gladly be like, Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Oh, I knew it was going to be expensive. Dude, that's just their addressable market. Now we're no longer part of it. That being said, you've seen the roof. It's held up. There's not been any leaks. Concern number one, hail hasn't broken through it. Also, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this and maybe you could see it in the video. We have trees on sides. So in the morning and in the evening, it's kind of shaded by trees. Maybe that'll change. We had a rainy year that equated to us producing 800 kilowatt hours less this year, but we got a lot of water and it, and we saved more money. Someday we could cut down those trees. You gotta, you've got to check in and find out someday, uh, the haze from coal power plants and Canadian wildfires, maybe that will go away and we'll produce even more electricity that year. Time will tell. Truly, thank you for sticking around this long. Bye. Hot. Ow. I uh, waited for our neighbors to be out of town before I climbed up here like a total weirdo.